what's going on, man? What's the deal? What's the deal? Nino, the cinema guy himself. Hey, yo, Nino, is that camera rolling? One third of Safe House Media. Safe House Media. Is that uh is that a company involved with it or is that a parent company? Explain that. That is the umbrella company that is going to hold the glue together for the cinema guys, Ayo Nino, uh Flu Shot, uh Apollo Spacely, all of us. But um yeah, that's the umbrella, that's the LLC for the entire group. Okay. So what like what role do you play in the uh the whole group? Um, mastermind. Always the master one, the guy with the plan, the visionary, Steve Jobs, you know, the guy that's going to put it all the way together when nobody sees it. I'm like, I had to say, I like to see foresight the future. For, yeah, okay. Foresight. So, so with Safe House Media, is that like a brainchild of you? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, how did you come up with it? Um, Wait, okay. Let, let's yeah. first, let's start at the beginning. Oh, no. Let's, okay. So, let them know who Ayo Nino is. Let them know who, who, who are you? Where did you start? Where did I start? Okay, I started out uh, in the basement on the east side, you know, for real, uh, 48203 shit, so. The east side of Detroit? Yes. Stay fair to be exact. Eight Mile will be the other side. Okay. And you grew up, went to school, lived here? How yeah, went to I went to multiple schools as a kid. Uh, it's actually that shit is very funny. So I wasn't bad at school or nothing like that. I wasn't like fucked up grade wise, but I just didn't like the school. And I probably be there like at one school for like a week or two, and then I would leave it because it was either I didn't like the way the teachers was, um, but. It's funny because it helped me further in life because after going to these schools, let's say like I meet you in school and shit, right? Right. We wasn't doing no videos, none of that. But like later on in life, since I went to that school and I bumped into you, I know specifically who you were. And those connections is what really got me through, through a lot of stuff like that and playing football. It was just like everybody was doing it. Everybody to play a pal. So, so you, everybody did you play football school. first? Yeah. Was that like your first, uh, like your first goal, your first love? Like, what did you want to be in life when you was in school? Um, I was always the kid that get picked up for drawing. Like, you know, art projects come up. Everybody wanted me. Everybody wanted me to be on a team because can't like fucking draw. Think about it. How many people can draw? How many left-handed people are there? I'm not left-handed. I'm right-handed. But ask yourself that. And it's like, right. so nobody you, can really draw. So, so you, you find yourself. football and you was drawing? Yeah. Okay. I used so. to get put out of class for that shit. You know, like, it's fucked up because how DPS was, they didn't have any art classes like that. And if they did, they were shitty. Like, right. no offense to the teachers that was doing because you was just doing your job. But they didn't have that for you to measure in just like a lot of people don't know I played hockey before I played football but like going to DPS schools we underfunded so I'm not getting to play hockey in the hood like I'm playing football that's the only next biggest thing besides that is basketball and those kind of cross paths so I really can't play both of them at the same time right and like so was art was that like was that the plan the whole time? Like, did you know you wanted to major in art? Yeah, for okay. sure. That's a that's actually a trait in my family. Everybody in my family can either draw or design their ass off. Okay. So what specifically was it, like, in, in art that you were aiming to do? Um, Man, growing up, my mama stayed painting our kitchen and our house. She never was satisfied. To this very day, man, I could call her right now and FaceTime her, and she's definitely painting her kitchen right now. Uh, right now, she, I think she got it as olive. Don't kill me, mama, if this come out and you see it. Uh, but it's olive green with, like, a slight tan color to it. And, like, she always painted me. Every picture you see me post in the kitchen as a kid, all the way up until adult, has, that background has always changed. But, um, my bad, but I didn't got off course. Uh, what was the question again? What, uh... 
like in art, what exactly did you want to do in the field of art? Um, in the field of art, I always wanted to draw, airbrush, paint, all of it. anything like, that was involved in art. I did was you always with. know you wanted to film, yeah. like do, work on movies. Man, my mom was stay with the camera. That was one of my biggest influences. Okay. My mama got pictures of me for days. Now my pops and my brother always filmed my football games. So it's always been a camera in my family. At um, what age did you pick up a camera? Like, what age? Around like, what's that? 13, 14. 13, 14. Is yeah. that when you started shooting music videos? Or is it like, what were you filming first? Um, At that point in time, I was just getting like my, uh, my football games recorded. But when I got like further in, like when I started being able to meet people that I either went to school with, when I knew they can rap and stuff like that. Like man, I used to rap too, but we ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> um, imagine just being in a room full of artists and everybody wanting to rap, but then you look up and you like, shit, well, who about to shoot our video? Hold on, wait a minute, one more. Who about to do our covers? Like, you got to have all of this stuff. Everybody want to be the rapper, but, like, nobody wants to think about the other legwork that you got to put in to keep this artist afloat. Like, right. just alone from your artwork can dictate how somebody wants to come listen to your music. And a lot of people don't put a thought into that. So, how you look at, it, like, the industry, you can see a lot of fine-tuned artwork. And then you look at stuff like, even with Drake artwork, it's simplistic, and a lot of people may say, oh, man, you got talent. You, I think you can do Drake artwork because this artwork, you know, kind of ain't. But it's simplistic, and it has it gets the message across, and a lot of people don't understand that. But, like, that sells a lot of your stuff. And then with videos, it's, it's, a, digital, it's a digital platform for you, end of the day. So it helps. You're right. I understand what you're saying. So you you like you do you enjoy playing behind the scenes better than being in front of the camera as a rapper? Oh, most definitely. You get that uh, money behind the scenes, man. You know, <laughs> you ain't always got to be in front of that camera. I'm telling that to every little homie out there to this day. Look, you ain't got to be in front of the camera. You can be behind it and still get money. You still we'll push the T side, man. We still drive the same whips. Still fuck the same hoes. Like, man, bro, the nigga was telling the truth about that shit, bro. Like, just think about that. You could be behind the scenes and still hit the same bitch that your man's with all the money in the world. Man, these bitches will fuck peons, bro. End of the day. Don't ever put yourself in a predicament like that. These bitches will fuck peons, bro. Man, next question, bro. (laughs) So, like... How long after you picked up the camera? You said about 13 or 14. Yeah. You said you was rapping and you, you started to shoot videos. Like, when did you get your first real uh, job to where you like, okay, it's going in the right direction? All right. So, me being in high school, it actually... See, my first real videos was with my cousin, King Diff. But officially paid videos, because, like, cousin... I'm going to say this shit straight the fuck up to y'all. Cuz ain't got to pay shit. Because cuz is cuz. If y'all really got a problem with that, fuck you. But my first paying gig, I had to shout out my nigga Gully and Floss Boy. Uh, shit, the Floss Boys, in all honesty. They the ones who really kind of helped me get through that threshold of it. And First Boys, too, because I ain't going to forget them. And Brick Babies. What y'all actually know is Cookie Trail, Keys, Feek. All of them, we all went to school together and we all had to play football together. So that's how we real tight to this very day. Um, how I got my first one though, I had to walk up to my nigga Gully because we was at the, uh, we was at County Line on uh, the east side and I bumped into him because he was getting a shirt or a hat or something made. And I'm like, hey bro, you rap, don't you? He like, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, all right. Send me some music and let's link up on some shit. And he like, all right, I got you. I thought you some cheese for it and shit. So we sat down and bro pulled up to the crib, walked around with my shit. And I'm like, all right, this is the game plan. We got to do this, this, and this. Maybe we got to the Warren Manor, shoot the video and shit. Maybe we put that bitch out. 
At this time, bro, this was before Band Gang. This was before a lot of these niggas, bro. Like, I'm telling you, I've been around for a minute. But this was like when niggas was just getting this shit, the fro, the nappy fro mm -hmm. shit. Like, like, what year? Like, so you give them a time frame. Like, what year was this? This was 2000. I had to say in between 2009 to 2012 time frame when we was doing all this. Um... Yeah, dog. That was like them was the original niggas. Niggas getting their fucking eyebrow cut shit. Like, but Gully and them put that shit on the map for me for the young nigga way. Cause we was going to the globe. We was mad. We was everywhere, bro. I ain't even about to talk about the other shit on camera, but we was everywhere. Let's just say that. Um. So original. while you was moving around, you was just meeting new people that you was shooting Yeah, with. and it's like, the shit is more, it's like it's contagious. It's like, all right, once you rock with this set of people, then it breaks down from like, all right, me hanging with Gully to me meeting Guapo, then me meeting Self Made Cash, me meeting uh, First Boys, then it going from First Boys to me bumping into Fluent shit at school and flu. Filming, but he was doing it. Um, Flu was doing the shit. This is how me and Flu linked up. So, Flu was filming the football game when we was playing against the, going against Crockett when they was still in school. He was filming on the sideline for Voltec. And I seen that shit. I'm on the field and I look and I'm like, dog know how to work a camera. All right, cool. So this was about to happen. I'm about to ask this nigga, do you want to come fuck with me on this video shit? We already be in class kicking jokes and shit. Bro, funny as hell. I already know what type of nigga he is. So we go shoot First Boy's video. And I go, Diff come and grab me. Because I ain't had no wheels at the time, nigga. So bro came and grabbed me. We went and drove to the east side and grabbed Flu. And then went further to the east side and went to go shoot the video. And that was my first collaboration with Flu. And that had to have been 2012, too. And at, at this time, what were you going by? Uh, at that time, it was Maximilian's Films. You can still find that shit. Um, early stages, but I still go on as Nino. You can still see the uh, tag in there that says Nino. Nah. Yeah, it was just Nino you know, at that time. Yeah, and for sure. Did you bring Flu on like a part of uh, Maximilian or was like that? Um, we actually morphed it out of the Maximilian's films and into the Cinema Gods. That was that 2013. That's when we changed the name of it and rebranded. Um, to the Cinema Gods? Yeah. So like at this at, at this time, it was you, you and Flu, y'all was Cinema Gods and y'all was operating in uh, out of Detroit, right? Yeah. So local, who yeah, else? Local who else was like uh, shooting videos at the time? Like, who did you come up with? Um, I had to shout out Super Ray, Joseph McFashion, Moolah, which was TMB, but they uh split, separated Beasley. Uh, I think it was High Tech. Yeah, it was High Tech. Um, and HD Films, which was uh Reels of Gold now, but. Yeah, it was just that's at the time. Uh, what was the environment like amongst the uh, like the videographers and everything back then? Back then, it was get this shit on film, and everybody really didn't know each other because we didn't have social media like that. We had Facebook, Instagram was still evolving. Like shit, we didn't even have video for Instagram at that time. We didn't get that until 2012 for real. Um, but like from that, what was that? Yeah, I had to say like. Oh six to around like oh nine is when all of that shit was kind of like falling in place. Um, nigga, MySpace was still a thing for a minute, then they cut that shit off. But yeah, that was that was the group of people that I know to this day that was filming. And were you like, do you feel like out the group, like were you were you in like the heavy hitters or were you like a beginner still um, at that time? I wouldn't say. I was in the heavy hitters, but I was in a tight spot because I was still in high school. Everybody else had either graduated or they was just older than me. So when you got the Team Eastside videos coming out with Ray, nigga, Ray out of school, he could hit the strip club. I couldn't even hit these strip clubs at this point in time. 
Okay. Um, so it was limitations on you at that time. Yeah. So it was like shit. Nigga had ID situation. You get to the door and they be like, but to even get past all of that shit, at that point in time when I did start going into the strip clubs and stuff, the first two people that brought me in on that was when Cobras was downtown, the Red Zone Tay uh, got me to record this music video there. And then the second time I went to Deja Vu, I was fucking with my nigga NBAC. And man, this nigga birthday on the uh, same day. That shit crazy. We think like completely alike. We are our own men, we bosses. Like bro, this shit is just crazy how you just meet people along the journey. Right. So you met, so you met Flu, y'all linked up and y'all formed the cinema guys. Yeah. So what was the next move after that? Like, what was the plan? Like when you, like, uh, where, what's your goal at this time? Oh, shit got busy at that point. Bro, shit got real fucking busy, man. Um, So at this point, I done moved out my mom's crib. I moved into my apartment. And now at this point, me and Flu, Flu got the whip now. I still ain't got no whip. So it was like, this shit still fucking sucks. I don't have a fucking whip. But Flu pull up. And now, we're in the era where fucking band gang is out now. I didn't know shit about band gang, but I grew up in that area too. And I'm like, bro, who the fuck is these? Like, who the fuck is this that's that's rapping? He like, bro, this band gang, some West Side niggas. I'm like, all right, cool. So uh, now music is progressing now. Now you got for show mag really at its highest peak. That's what I'm gonna have to really say. For sure, Mag is at his highest peak. They running basically every fucking thing. Uh, you was you was with For Show Mag at, at at a time, right? Yeah. So, uh, how did you how did you link with them? Like, did you did you link with them back then, or was it later on? Um, it was later on. Um, they actually see with them, it was just seeing progression from any videographer. In all honesty, there's a lot of videographers that have been over there. Um. Everybody's situation. Me personally, I don't have any problems with them. I gracefully bought out of uh, the whole shit. You know, you know, with them with no more. I'm not an affiliate with them anymore. Um, I still got like ties and stuff to them. But okay, so no. like, what was the relationship as far as like, what was the work, the working relationship? Um, shit, they just called me. It was consignment, bro. That's all it was. Shit, uh, it was like I ain't had to really sign like no contracts or no bullshit like that. I'm smart enough to know that. I ain't signed no fucking contracts. Okay. So uh, what like what caused you to now when you say like you you parted ways, does that mean that you like you no longer um, offer videos for to be uploaded to that or anything? Yeah, so far as that, yeah. I, um it's just the growth thing, man. You just grow out of it. Like um Joe definitely seen me grow from it. I actually like appreciate him bringing me over there and uh actually looking out and shit. Cause um he helped me like fully, fully established some shit. Like, the niggas like Diddy, bro, in all honesty. The niggas definitely like Diddy. The moves that he pulled, it's <laughs> some Diddy moves. Like, that shit crazy. Um, we just kind of lost contact and fell out of contact for real. And it was like, I was moving in a different direction. I was more so going into my rebranding. Like, the beauty out of the shit was how we came out with privileges the video nigga we was on the way to the video shoot on the east to drop off a shirt to cash kid for his video for privileges but joe was supposed to shoot that nah we pull up to the video shoot but before we get there i got a text from joe saying hey bumping the kid because kid is over here signed to sign with for showing shit now right so i pull up over there we go in the house, we kick it with Kid Kid, like, this the song I got, this the song I want to do. So, we out there. Everybody, shout out to Rich, uh, Rich Town Butter, too, because he definitely acted a fucking ass in that video. Uh, so, we filming the video, we put it out. I'm like, man, this is when I first dropped the tag, too. Everybody's like, bro, what the fuck? That bitch hard as hell. It's like, when hey, y'all need all that camera rolling. Okay, so when was, like, what year was this? This was, let me see. 
I had to say 2015 or 16, one of them. 2015. 20, okay. Yeah, it was 2016, 2016, because I was a, uh, it's a specific house I was at when I, uh, when I had that. But we end up going to film that and then like instantly, like I had to say a couple weeks went by, video shooting up. I'm like, all right, this bitch on the rise. I mean, we got to look back at that bitch, bro. That bitch can crack the end. We like, oh, shit. Kid back in his bag. This sense all oh, my mama. So, like, he got a few videos in between that time frame. But, like, this is the shit that shook the shit, like, shook the cage for him to get back in the game to where he at right now. And, like, each video after that, that nigga is hitting the M, dog. That nigga got back on that shit. Um... All these old videos caught traction too, so them bitches. Did hit you get any uh, recognition out of the uh, the deal? Like how, as far as like business for you, like after the video dropped, what happened? Ah uh, man, bro, it ain't a place I can't go in this motherfucking city right now, dog. Where a nigga be like, bro, you did privileges, dog. That's crazy, bro. You, dog, you a yo Nino. It's a lot of things. Is just the face recognition. Because I played behind the scenes for so long that when somebody do see it, like, now I hit the clubs and shit, and they be like, oh, we got A.O. Nino in the building, whoop de whoop Like, it, the recognition is cool, but it's just like, shit, bro, I'm a, I'm a regular dude. Like, I ain't funny acting, bro. I pull up on any nigga hood, any nigga block. Like, I'm still the same nigga that everybody know, bro. I ain't got no issues with nobody. Like, if you got an issue with me, bro, you probably broke. That's your fault. Fuck you. You the dick. But, yeah. So what What caused the... You you getting all this recognition and everything as Cinema Gods. You working for so long under this name. What caused the change in uh, the name to Safe House Media? Um, Just because I felt like I can rebrand anything. Like, I... Steve Jobs is one of my favorite people, like, on the creator tip. Like, and Steve Wozniak also. Let's not forget that puzzle piece. Um, reason why I say that is because when you're able to create and not be held down by just one brand of name, like, bro, I can literally turn Red Cup Films Media into something the next day, like, because I have that so belief you, you in like the challenge. Me. Yeah. Of starting over. Yeah, and it's like, it's I can start over and still be who the fuck I am because my name holds weight, end of the day. Where do you hope to take your brand? Like, where do you see yourself in, like, the next five years? Um, the next five years? Man, I ain't gonna lie, dog. In the next five years, I don't want to even look that far. Like, I just, I'd rather just let that shit be a surprise because... That's the, deep. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like, I don't want to plan that shit. Like, I, I've i done it before and said it, and then the shit happens because I can foresight it. But, no, nah, I want it to be more of a surprise than anything. Do I think I would have been here? Like, after all I'd have been through? Yeah, man, still, like, same shit. Like, even with me not finishing out the whole football thing, like, me ending the career in high school. Like, uh, like, I grew tired of it. It was politics and football, so that was the shit I had to go through with that. So you speak on everything that you've been through. Let's talk about some of the complications and some of the struggles that you went through as a a videographer in Detroit no. coming up. Like, uh, for instance, uh, how do you oh, handle man, beef? <laughs> how do you handle beef as a as a videographer? All right, um, me personally, dog. That has zero shit to do with me. I'm just doing my job. Like, if you go in the Foot Locker and Foot Locker sell you some red shoes and then they sell the other nigga some blue shoes, you ain't gonna go in the Foot Locker and be like, bitch, quit selling these shoes. Like, nigga, fuck the ops. Like, nigga, they gonna look at you and be like, bro, call the police, get this nigga the fuck out of here. Like, you can't tell a nigga not to go film. Like, nah, is it solely up to us to honestly make sure we view the music and make sure that we're not just putting out shit that's blatantly like talking about somebody. Yeah. Um, 
But at the same time, dog, if you ain't paying a nigga, bro, and you just, all you coming with is fucking complaints and bullshit, bro, ain't nobody trying to hear that shit, dog. Have you ever ran into any situations to where somebody tried to check you over a video that you shot for somebody else? Nobody, per se, checked me. But, um, yeah, it's artists that have complications with each other, so I just left it at that, like. How did you resolve the situation? Like, are you still, would you still work with both of the artists or either one of them? Like, how did you? Uh, um, like I said, bro, um, I'm a grown, uh, I'm like, I'm a grown ass man, bro. If I can't figure out a situation with you through a conversation, you a fucking kid, bro, and you ain't on my fucking radar. Leave, like, leave that shit be, like. I got motherfucking kids and shit. I got to take care of them, bro. I, nigga, if you got an issue with me about that shit, bro, like I said, bro, you either broke, bum you, whatever fuck you is, bro. I don't, I don't know. Go jump off a rope with some shit. Like, I don't know, dog. But. What are some other uh, struggles that you face? Like, have you ever been put in some situations as a cameraman? Hard to be? edit a nigga music video. You said hard to edit? Hard to edit a, a nigga music video. As far as what? Quality of music. Like, it's like bleeding my fucking ears out. Yes, I've had that. Um, has that ever been difficult to work with an artist, but he has the bread? Yes. Because either they don't have the... Either they don't have the talent, they do have the talent, but they don't have the bread. It's like, bro, it's a... So, war, so you're bro. saying basically you saying money isn't you don't do it for the money. I don't, do yeah, it. I don't just strictly do it for the money. Like the money is just the luxury of it. Like uh, I'm getting paid to do what the fuck I know how to do. Um, but you would turn down money for if man. the song is not quality. <sighs> yeah, I would turn down a fucking video if you were fucking difficult. Bro, I even screen the call and look at this shit and tell you, like, bro, I got somebody else in the camp that either rock with you or I could recommend somebody. I still wouldn't just leave you high and dry. But, like, if I know I'm having complications with working with this artist, why fucking tug a war with somebody over that shit, bro? Just let them niggas go about their day. At least try to help them get to their next avenue. Because it ain't been sometimes I done turned down the video and that bitch popped. And it's like, shit, what the fuck you want me to do? <laughs> like, nigga. <laughs> How did you feel in a situation like that? Did you feel like you missed out or do you feel like it wasn't for you? Um, This game is like a revolving door, bro. And there's always room for opportunity for shit like that. So, no, nah, I, I really, you really it don't is care about it. Is. Like, uh, I was able to get a video. Like, I could have turned down a video with Isai Ivo. But Ivo, cool. Like, he called me like, hey, bro, I'm trying to get a video done. And I'm like, bro, but do you really, 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 in my Trump list, really do music? And he's like, yeah, send me the song. It was by Hell of a. He put it out on his platform. Get y'all a fucking platform, end of the day. Y'all do that, because bro use this platform for something smart. Um. That bitch cracked the M, and I was like, it surprised me. I'm like, all right. You shot it? Yeah, I shot it. Okay. A, the title is Eastside Ivo, Daddy Y. And then after that, I had one with GT, which was uh, 25 Reasons. I had one with Molly Brazy. Got the one with Cash Kid. Just got an M this year for the practice video for GT and Babyface. Um... And for our one video that we did with Dame Dot, which was a uh, scar, we had one for that. That was a uh, I helped set up lighting and stuff for Apollo on that one. What services do you offer, uh, like besides music videos, photography, graphics? Um, I also fix computers too. Might drop an engine in your shit. <laughs> um, was everything everything that you know was self taught? Yeah. Got it out of the mud, YouTube University. Woo woo. <laughs> uh, man, shout out to them torrents. <laughs> uh, shit, man. But all right. So who who you said you work with like Big Sean and everything on the, on the artwork. So who was like would you say you had the most fun working with? 
most fun working with, my nigga Forever Meach. Um, if you go watch his videos, you'll be like, God damn, dog, this nigga Nino tripping. Like, why this ain't got this X amount of numbers? It's just a time and a place, dog. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. But me and Meach forever are always working, dog. Like, me and him travel every time we do some shit, bro. It's a fucking one, bro. So I'm just waiting for him to crack an M, bro. Waiting for Ross to actually hit that nigga up, bro. Because he definitely could fit that MMG stature. Um, But probably him and uh, the fuck else I have fun shooting some shit with. Spill last. Because he funny as hell. Every fucking video shoot is some funny shit. Always some funny shit, dog. And man, I have been through so much crazy shit together. Um, we end up going to, what was that? Not Cobras, Hard Bodies, dog. And like, this show, bro, I had a hustle in me, bro. We got done shooting Remy Frost video. And we parked across the street from Hard Bodies. And we went in. That's when T Grizzly first, first, Got on, and he was uh doing the show there, nigga. I'm at the tour bus. I'm at the little sprinter bus with him and shit, talking to him and shit. So I go back across the street to go grab some equipment. Luckily, bro, a nigga had his book bag, camera, and all this shit. Nigga busted spill back window door, and the nigga took like all the dumbest shit. Like the nigga took batteries, no charger. Light panels left the stands. The nigga was trying to hit a jackpot. The nigga took my speaker, bro. I ain't had a good speaker since then, bro. All these JBL speakers and shit keep fucking breaking. Like, this shit is just fucked up. But, yeah, dog. So, I go back over there. And this nigga Remy walk over there. He like, y'all niggas good? I'm like, man, hell no, bro. My shit gone. He like, ah, man. Shit, they ain't get your camera, did they? I'm like, nah, my camera was in my book bag when we was in the... He like, all right, bet. You'll be able to finish the video, right? I'm like, yeah, dog, yeah. So, get back to the crib. No, I fuck that. I ain't even gonna talk about how I got back to the crib. Let's talk about the ride back, the pain and agony for sitting in a car in a fucking dead winter with a busted window with our hoodies on like this, like, no, look, and these niggas took the adapter to play music, bro. So y'all couldn't even listen to no music on the way. Bro, so you know how this, fucked up that is from going from there, riding 94 all the way back east somewhere? Y'all headed back to finish the video after all this stuff went on? No, the video was done. It was done. Remy yeah. wanted us to go in there and film with him being in the club, with, right, uh, right. being in the club with T, because this was when T... Right. T move all of them was just coming up. Right, right. So we like, all right, cool. It's a picture. If you go on spill page, you'll see the picture of him and T right there. I took that. But uh dog, that was a long ass, cold ass ride, bro. Like that bitch was freezing. It was the back passenger. The crazy part was the door was fucking open. <laughs> the nigga just they, he didn't even try to do her. Bro, and I'm going the crazy part what Fuck me up, cause before the car got broken into, this was my fault, by the way. But like my street smarts, spidey senses wasn't tingling at that fucking point. I'm walking back from the car after I grab something out the car, and I'm seeing fucking glass on the ground, bro, and not paying no mind to that shit, cause I'm like, all right, I just got paid, I'm about to go and do this, nigga. Get in the club, come back out, all that shit. We see the glass, we see the car busted up, and bro said that shit. So now we on the way back to the east. Bro, I got to explain to my girl, bro, half my fucking equipment is gone. She like, bro, what the fuck? I'm like, all right. And like, me being a real nigga, I paid for this shit for uh, Spill Window, because he was there on the count for me. Right. So I just took care of the window. Like, y'all know a back window, how expensive that is. <laughs> The little one, like the little nook one that you look out of, the badass kids be putting oh, yeah. their fingerprints. That one, because they bro, that bitch costs a lot, bro. To it's replace. more, it's more than the uh, the, the actual regular. fucking window. Yeah, that shit crazy. Yeah. 
That's a fucking ripoff. Golly. So Boy. how did you end up replacing your equipment? Bro, I got off my ass and got on my ground, bro. Free <laughs> side 80s, bro. You ain't taxed the artist or anything like that? No, nah, bro. Shout out to the Joe, bro. Because Joe had me, like, Joe had me in my bag to, I was getting X amount of dollars because I'm smart to take care of my shit. So uh, I ended up ordering the lights and shit because it was flu lights that got stolen. And I had some lights in there, but. Dad just took the whole duffel bag. I guess they didn't get to go through it all. Nigga dropped batteries, all that other crazy shit in there, too. Um, nigga left a charger. It was just like, bro, what the fuck? Like, what is you going to do with this? Who is you going <laughs> to take this to, bro? You're taking batteries, not the camera, and, like, just little miscellaneous shit. Like, the nigga take the cord off the mic. Maybe it was a camera and some stuff he needed. <laughs> Man, come on, bro. <laughs> Hey, I was definitely on tip, though, because I was definitely going to slide down on any nigga that thought they was going to uh, be out here filming with you my got, shit. You got your stuff labeled, don't you? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. So you would have saw it. Yeah, somebody would have saw it. Yeah, I thought I seen it one time, and then I, I ended up looking at it. I'm like, all right, no, nah, that ain't my shit. Like, wait a minute. Let me look at that again. No, nah, all right, cool. But, yeah, nah, that, that's the shenanigans and shit, dog. <laughs> let's, uh, let's touch on, like, the... Uh... The big project you just released. All right, uh, so all in all, the movie. <laughs> feature film, feature Mr. Film. Director. Because they don't know that you are a real director. They think you just shoot. You, we're sitting in front of a real director. I got something for y'all. But look, so look I just don't want to give y'all no bullshit. Let's but, talk about how the, how the movie came about. You know, from the beginning. Then. All right, so my nigga Will actually linked me with my guy Izzy Dre. The first time we were going to do it, it was several of us. Uh, it was several videographers. And like I said, I'm a smart guy, so I know not to do that type of shit anymore. So I gracefully bought out that situation and everybody just did it to the fucking movie. So a couple years go by and Dre hit me back up. And he like, bro, I really fuck with you, your vibe. You seem like you know everything. Um, let's try to get this movie going. And I'm like, you know what? I've been making my money. I got time. We got back together and uh, sat down and talked. And at this point, I'd have matured as a videographer, cinematographer, however anybody want to say this shit. Uh, and he was like, damn, bro, you seem like you know a lot about this shit. And I'm like, well, it's definitely time to, you know, put a movie up under my belt. So Dre wrote the entire script. And then he ad-libbed some of it to get it going. Because, you know, you can't just write a fucking comedy and that bitch just all out be funny. Like, right. some of that shit, you just got to do it. Did uh, you have any part in the, uh, in the that casting? part of the production, the casting or the, or the um, writing? In the cast, and we had a few people come back from the original auditions that we uh, auditions that we did, and it's crazy because Will was about to kick one of the people that's one of the main characters on there off, and we like, no, nah, this nigga was phenomenal. What is you? What are you seeing? So it was like we ended up getting him back, and he ended up playing like major role in it. So it worked out for the best. Um, how long did it take to film? It took a year um, because we only shot on certain days and we're in Michigan. So it's like you can't just film every fucking month because it's starting to get cold as motherfuckers can see outside now. Um, it just took a minute because of that. And then he had to work. I had to work and I had the shit I had going on on the side. So I ended up... Uh, doing that and editing at the same time. So with him knowing exactly how he wants these gut punchers and these lines to stick, I had him sit down with me and show me specifically how he wants it edited because like I said, that comedy shit ain't no fucking joke. Like you lit ironically, but it's joking, but um you actually have to cut that shit at the right moments 
because the joke stick. Yeah, you can make the joke still as fuck, or you can have a joke going on too long. And that shit kind of coached me. Like, I got a music video about to come out, and it got dub funny in it, bro. The nigga is so great at the shit. His, like, his improv is, like, there. Like, I don't, I haven't met nobody for real that, besides, like, Jay Will. But, like, yeah, you got to be on point with that shit, especially with the editing. Like, you can fuck up a whole joke just from one wrong incision cut in a timeline. So, it took you a year to sh- film, and you were, like, the, the director, the main director and editor and Bro, everything? I know this is going to sound crazy as hell, but if you roll the fucking credits at the end of that movie, bro, that shit looked like an Eddie Murphy production. Your name is everywhere. The name is fucking everywhere. Nigga, I was <laughs> Big Mama, the little nigga, the fat nigga, the clump, whatever the fuck was in there. I was that. Like, that's how that shit was. Um, Do you feel like the project was su- successful? Yeah, it was successful. First go around. Um, I had to say, like, Things that I would have fixed, and I wish I'd have spent a lot more time on, besides on the film, um, just audio. Like I wish I could have had like a better audio team. I didn't have an audio team for that project. Like my next go around, the audio is going to be phenomenal. Are you planning your next movie? Are you looking for movies? Are you looking for people to pitch movies to you, or um, are you? I'm looking for people to pitch movies to me. It has to be like. Bro, I don't want that typical shit. And if somebody come with an idea and I feel like it's worthy or something I want to put on my plate, yeah. Because I've had the chance to... uh, I was supposed to film on Snakes. One... No, not one. Two and three. But I end up... I was busy. I was, like, crunching through music videos that summer. So I was just like, no, I just turned it down. But uh, ball shout out to Ball Out and them, too. Um... They did a stellar job on it. Um, do you write your own movies? Do I write them? Yeah, I got one in the tuck, um, but I'm just a perfectionist, so I'm like Take not rushing to just put it out. Like, right. if it's gonna be right, like it's gonna be good enough for y'all to come out and actually watch this film and uh, purchase it online. Um, crazy part too. We got kicked off uh, Amazon. Off oh, Amazon, why? What happened? Um, they actually flagged our shit. Um, I guess somebody felt like we said something that crossed the line. Like all of the shit that motherfuckers be saying, but like they felt like this particular line just attacked them. Do you know the line? Um, no, they no, didn't. Sir. With no fair warning, in no, all no, honesty, they off. just took our shit off. Like. It was on Amazon from December 9th from the movie premiere all the way up until, like, I had to say, give or take, three months ago. They snatched our shit off. Yeah. um, That shit fucked up. Because, like, bro, I worked hard. Like, we worked hard on that shit. And it was like, for our shit to just get taken down, like, people was really going to see it. We did 50,000 the first week. Like, viewership. And like, just somebody come take it down because they angrily like, bro, if you don't like it, bro, just go. Like, why would you attack a film? Like, this film didn't do nothing to you, bro. I worked hard, like, stayed up late as fuck in the basement to get this shit done. Now I'm in a fucking office. Like, dog, I don't know, bro. Motherfuckers go hate, though. If you ain't, if ain't, motherfuckers ain't hating on you, dog, you ain't doing nothing right. Like, no, honestly. But, uh, shit. Next question. So where can they like, where can they find you? Like, where can people book you? Do you work with all artists, or like, are you are you picky on who you work with? Bro, if you come to me with the right agenda and game plan, and not trying to be one of those leeches, bro, you might get a surprise out of me. But like, don't just come open hand thinking you're just about to get anything from me, bro, because I don't fuck with that. Like, that's some leech-ass shit. Like, come expecting to work and set it up for success, because, bro, I, like I said, I've seen people come and go, and, like, I'm not leaving no time soon. I've seen talent whoosh, fall off. 
where they back at, trying to find me to get back to where the fuck they was at. So, uh, what's yeah, the I don't know to work with anybody. Right? What's the best way to contact you? Best way to contact me is either through Instagram. I'm not passing on my number no more because <laughs> this is what it takes me at three in the morning. Like, hey, bro, I think I, I think this the one. Yeah, I think this the one more. I'm about to hang up on your ass because nigga, my wife right here, she looking at me with a knife to my neck. Like, hey, who is this calling you at three in the morning? Y'all know that shit don't look right, bro. Y'all see this shit every day. Look at this shit, bro. I got a fucking ring, bro. I've been married since 2016, bro. Why the fuck are y'all calling me at 3 in the morning, bro? Those are not business hours, bro. Business hours are from 11 a.m. to 10 at night, bro. That is it. You don't get nothing. 9 o'clock at the most, shit. But yeah, dog. Motherfuckers definitely will call you and be like, (laughs) bro, I need you to come film this music video. We at the studio turned up. Nigga, you couldn't have told me this earlier. I could have adjusted all my plans and then came out and did the shit. But nah, you know, there's a rock star lifestyle, dog. I, I I get it, bro. I get it. So what's your Instagram handle so they can find you? Instagram handle. Look, so I don't know how bro going to do this shit in the lower mm-hmm. thirds. Yeah, that's that camera talk for you stupid niggas. <laughs> the lower thirds is down here somewhere. So, hey, yo, Nino. <sighs> Safe House Media. Go fuck with Apollo Spacely. And Flu Shot Me. And the Cinema Guys, if y'all trying to get some artwork. Because I, I don't be doing the artwork shit on my A on Nino page. So, go go tap in with that. I send bro the shit so he can type it out at the bottom for you stupid niggas that can't spell. Next nigga say, Cinnamon God, I'm smacking you. <laughs> I'm smacking you. <laughs> I'm smacking you. Sure. The cinnamon be good. Like nigga, it's a cinema. Y'all niggas get Cinemax, uh, HBO, whatever the fuck it is. Y'all get all that shit. Y'all can't get that shit right. Damn, dog. <laughs> man, shout out my nigga GLT, dog. Cause uh-huh. that's the realest nigga in the game. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. It was nice being able to sit down and talk to you, man. We gonna do it again. Oh yeah, I got one more thing to add. What's that? Um. So, just so y'all know this shit, Bodie James is my cousin. Um, Cartier Cash is my cousin also. Um, And I'm lightweight related to, who else is that? Uh, From Starheart, Starheart Hill. Yeah, so we all like family and shit, so. Just so y'all know that. And there's some other parts of this shit I I would talk about, but y'all seen my family in documentaries.